my channel. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Um, I'm on my way to pick up a, a few tomatoes for another upcoming recipe. And I don't know if I'm going to um, do the recipe in this video or in another one, but I am going to be making um, the sauce probably. And it's just going to be another pasta uh, recipe because I had so much left over from the one that I did yesterday. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop into the Walmart and I'm gonna film this because every time I go there, um, something, very rude occurs and it's been going on in every parking lot that I go to. And so um, it all began with a greeter who pushed a buzzard as soon as I walked in. And um, this couple tried to have an altercation with me in the parking lot uh, about an hour later after I, as I was trying to leave the store or the lot actually. And so I, I just thought I would film it for fun, you know, and uh, see where it takes me. So uh, I, after I grab the tomatoes, I am going to talk to you about Norma Jean Baker, um, the next um, bombshell movie star that I would like to talk to you about. I'm just simply going to introduce her and... Um, you know, I, she's such a fascinating icon and still is, always has been, and will never, ever die down. I was trying to say, I <laughs> hope that you enjoy um, my discussion today, and I hope that you did enjoy the discussion on Jean Harlow. And um, I, you know, I'm a little anxious about getting to the store, so I want to push off. And I'm going to have to look at this clip and see if I need to redo, redo it because um, it, it, I'm having that situation again. It keeps shutting down. And I know that there's a few cars right there that are, I don't know where it's coming from. Let's put it that way. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll be in touch with you in a little bit. parking lot nothing happened but as soon as I walked through the door the buzzards went off again so um, I, I, it didn't go off with the other persons as you could see the people who went right before me um, there was no issue but then it happened again with other people so I couldn't be sure and um, it, it used to be so nice going there I never had issues. Um, mind you, these ones that I experienced today, they might be imaginary, but they're very irritating. And I think the CEO might want to do something about it because that's very distracting when you have a lot of shopping to do. For people who have a lot of shopping to do, that's very distracting. And um, it's a mess in there, but it's a, it's a good store. Um, I, I like going there because um, the service 
has always been good. And the merchandise, um, I'm always pleased with it. So other than those issues, uh, mostly parking, the parking lot. Um, you know, it, it's that's all there is. And it's very irritating. Um, I, you know, as far as princess parking is concerned, handicapped and family parking, that, that's not princess parking. I think there should be more princess parking for issues that I experienced last week and the week before. Uh, I'm just saying parking lots are becoming a real hassle. They're not people friendly. As far as I'm concerned, they're not people friendly. And um, I think parking lots should have sidewalks so that people can walk through without being bombarded by moving vehicles. It's a, it's um, you know, it's unavoidable. But still, I, I think that they could be um, better constructed so that people can manipulate um, the buggies and their cars around more freely uh, without, um, you know, becoming a hazard. Uh, I don't know why I think of these things. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, so let's have a, a, a little chat about, um, first of all, the transition of um, cinema and entertainment. Uh, between the 30s and 40s. Now, we know that in the 30s, there was a big transition from the silent to the um, talking films, and it was a very gradual um, transition. And um, that was uh, Jean Harlow's hold over so many um so many actresses right so um anyway when she when she uh finally got her career established um she was one of the first actresses who would have climbed to fame just on popularity alone because you know movie critics and Louis B Mayer they didn't like her so, uh, unfortunately, and it made it very difficult for her. And so, um, you know, the, tra the uh, trends in entertainment were very musical um, out of consequence of the uh, movies becoming uh, sound enabled. Uh, music was a big part of it. And unfortunately, Jean Harlow was not that musically inclined. Um, although she had a, a very um, proper and um, affluent upbringing, um, she, she had never been trained. She had never been taught. She was not a musical person. Um, it, it, she, never, she never was able to captivate her audiences with singing or dancing or playing any musical instrument. However, musicals in, in the 40s became such a big thing, starting in the 30s with, you know, um, teams like Fred and Ginger, um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. I was so obsessed with them when I was 11, 12 years old. Um, I used to try to copy and mimic the um, dance routines. When I was a child, um, everything that I saw from that era was magical. It captivated me. I don't know why, but anyway, that's what I was like. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, it, it also, there was a big move. Um, for the movie industry to clean up its act and um, get on with uh, establishing a proper code for content, right? Like all other social media platforms do. And so, um, you know, there were a lot of gangster movies and that was primarily what um, Hollywood had to clean up. Um, and so the... Um, 
romantic drama co comedy, the soapy kind of movies that um, became so popular uh, uh, around the end of the 40s and into the 50s. Um, they were like soap operas. They were in the mainstream and they were clean. They were much cleaner. However, um, as, as they became or tried to become cleaner, um, certain types of relationships like, um, uh, relationships that had been, um, promoted by the blonde bombshell type character, uh, they were becoming that, that kind of industry um, and entertainment and theme in the movies was coming, becoming more and more popular. It sold the blonde bombshell uh, image and all the issues surrounding it really sold. And so... That's why it's unbelievable that, um, you know, even though Hollywood was trying to clean up its act, they knew that people weren't going to go for those um, squeaky clean themes like, uh, you know, uh, that television sold us like Leave it to Beaver and, and all those family shows. No, uh, people wanted something a little more... Uh, substantial than that. So um, that's where Marilyn Monroe came in. Um, so um, uh, she was known uh, first as Norma Jean Baker, and then she became known as Norma Jean Dougherty. And so, um, so let's try to go back into the beginning. And um, she was born, Norma Jean, I'm going to refer to her as Norma Jean. Norma Jean was born uh, in on June the 1st, 1926, and tragically passed away. Um, we'll get to that later. On In the first week of August, 1962, she was 36 years old. She had just turned 36. Um, and so anyway, um, Marilyn or Norma Jean, rather, didn't have the affluential influ you know, influences that Nor um, Jean Harlow or Harleen had growing up. Um, Harleen had everything. Her father was a dentist. Her mother was a socialite, although her parents were not that happy. Uh, Norma Jean fits into latchkey child. Um, she was basically, essentially, orphaned. And uh, she was in 12 different foster homes. Um, so we need to tell her story with a little... Um, a little more compassion and sensitivity than we saw in, um, you know, Harleen's story. Now, um, Harleen did go through some traumatizing issues in her early teens, but um, we don't know what they were. We know that they must have indeed traumatized her. Um, or stigmatized her, maybe both. We don't know what the secrets are. There are rumors, but um, to me, a rumor is not a fact, so I don't dwell on them. However, um, with Norma Jean, she, um, her mother, Gladys Baker, was actually uh, married in Mexico, and she was a film editor. She was a movie cutter, guys. She she worked in Hollywood, but not a little like maybe a little like um, the real Jean Harlow, Harleen's mom. Uh, she probably aspired to be an actress and was waiting to be discovered. But her luck ran out when she was very young. And because she had Norma Jean to think of, she needed to work. She needed to... Um, keep a steady paycheck coming in. And what happened, guys, is um, in a nutshell, um, she became overworked and overstressed. Um, 
it was hard to be a woman working in the industry in those days. And so she was probably a pioneer uh, from what I gather, but uh, she couldn't cope. Uh, I think with the misery of not having a man in, as a permanent fixture in her life, for her and for Norma Jean, um, she, she buckled. She ended up in a hospital and there she stayed guys. Um, so that is the story of uh, how Norma Jean became a, uh, she became orphaned. And so, you know, the way one biographer puts it um, is that because Norma Jean was born under the sign of Gemini, um, she always um, had this uh, thing about her that she could be very dual. Uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, she, she was often even conscious of being two people, two, and I don't mean this in a psychological or emotional way either. I just mean that she probably at a very young age had to try to deal with so much that she tried to be more than she could. Um, I, I know that she was abused and we'll, we'll probably get to that maybe. Um, but um, what I'm trying to say is that um, she was a very unique personality, and um, she, she people were drawn to her. People were drawn to her, but at the same time, she could also make herself out to be an outcast, and that was part of her many dualistic traits. She could be very social, and she could also be very withdrawn. And so um, it, it, that's something to bear in mind when um, it, that even before MGM and um, Fox and, and Columbia um, began her grooming and transformation from Norma Jean to Marilyn Monroe, um, even before that, she was very dualistic. And so I, I don't mean that in a very negative at all way. Um, some people will try to say, yeah, she, she probably was this and that, you know, psychologically uh, unstable. Well, I, I would imagine she would have had to have been unstable to an extent, um, having had the uh, insecurities that she did when she was growing up. And so, and so um, the biographer also comes up with a good example of what exactly I'm trying to say. And it would be um, probably going back to one of the first times she ever saw her um, show business name on the billboard, um, on the screen. And she, she uh, turned around and said to somebody, gee, I wish, you know, it, it would just simply say Norma Jean playing right here um, so that all the old um, chums that she had from childhood uh, and growing up would be able to recognize her because she had got, undergone such a physical uh, transformation and um, also she went to, I, I, I'm pretty sure she had vocal training and things like that. She um, enunciated so, so beautifully, guys. Um, and she had such a wonderful and amazing voice. And so, um, you know, uh, she often, when, when the uh, subject of... Um, Jekyll and Hyde came up, she would um, sometimes jokingly say, um, well, I, I wish I were just me. I wish I could just be one person. I wish I could be, in other words, she was very complex. And, and she wanted to just be a, a simple, plain old person, and but she couldn't. So, um,
I I believe that、uh, many people were drawn to、um, Norma Jean because she essentially stayed the same. She stayed a child throughout her、uh, young adult years, and to me, she she was. I mean, she she passed away so young, and、uh, it, it's she. So many people were drawn to her for that childlike.、Um, I don't know if you want to call it innocence. She had that manner about her that was just so childlike, and people loved that because she was frank and down to earth, and.、Um, She just liked having a good time, you know.、Um, you could be very familiar with Norma Jean in just a few minutes if you were yourself, and so、um, that's just how things were with her relationships. And so,、um, while she was being groomed at the studios,、um, it, much was made a- about her life story. And、uh, in, in, instead of、um, having,、uh, you know, how Jean Harlow was、um, uh, brought down to earth、uh, and, and photographed and filmed doing typical average American female things, Marilyn Mon-、uh, Norma Jean、uh, was trying to overcome the hurdle of everyone knowing that she came from. A very difficult childhood, and so、um, much was made about her unhappiness. So that that even if she was happy, and even if she did achieve success and fame, she could never really be left alone、um, regarding that、uh, stigma. And so、um, that was one difficulty that her real life character. Could not、um, her real life character could not be、um, reconciled with the character that the public gave her. So、um, she struggled with that, and I'm sure a lot of her unhappiness was there all the time. It, there, there,、um, issues about her made her feel worse. So if she wasn't unhappy. Before they commented on it, she was happy after they. She was unhappy after they did. You know what I'm saying. So,、um, one of the first stories that came out、um, before 1950 was that、um, uh, it, it was actually 1946、um, that her f- real father, who she never knew. Um, she was never able to、uh, pinpoint. Her real father passed away in a car crash、um, when she was、um, a baby, and so、uh, afterwards, her mother became too ill to look after her, and so、um, she was therefore adopted by family, friends, and acquaintances. Well, that's half true. That's half false. Still, even that story itself left us with the image of little Norma Jean as a cast-off,、uh, a ward. An orphan of the L.A. County. So,、um, either way, I, I think Norma Jean really did suffer with that stigma, but it, it there was not that much that she could do about it. I, it was the truth. And so there were other stories that circulated, such as one where、um, Norma Jean. We called a grandmother trying to smother her when she was barely a year old, um, and um, 
being forced into child labor, being forced to wash dishes in the orphanage. Well, that's not so bad. Um, uh, she included memories of being abused by the father of one of her adoptive or foster families and um, of being um, molested, things like that. I, I am not sure. I believe that probably much of it was true. I'm not sure about the grandmother part. Um, but this is uh, all, all probably things that maybe her agent might have suggested um, to draw more sympathy. I don't know. So, um, so whether it was her idea or whether it was the studios or her agents, um, the uh, theme of going from rags to riches was a very appealing Hollywood theme, and it made her on-screen characters all the more alluring and lovable. Um, that kind of uh, life story drew so much inspiration and gave so much inspiration to other Americans, uh, especially females, and um, it, it drew so much sympathy for her as well. And so one thing that we have to uh, recognize is that L.A. County, as it exists in a very large, sprawling, and somewhat chaotic confusion sometimes. Um, I'm going by somebody else's description, but real urban L.A. life. It was not, when she was a child, what it is today. So there's that issue to comprehend as well. And so um, shortly after um, Gladys Baker was hospitalized, the first foster parents, Ida and Wayne Bolander, did offer little Norma Jean lots of love and comfort. And she made um, children's clothes. Ida made children's clothes. And um, I, there was one where uh, Norma Jean, I'm going to try to include it because I know it's online. Um, I, I had... I had something with the same pattern and print on it when I was a baby. And so um, it, it looks like little cherries. And she had a matching dress and bonnet. And so um, that was when Norma Jean was just <laughs> a tiny girl. And um, so she made that for Norma Jean. Ida did love her. And so uh, we don't. We we don't know what else uh, Norma Jean would have had to endure after that, but that family was okay. And so I'm not sure that this biographer is going to go into any other details other than that. So we'll have to see. And so in the 1920s, L.A. was absolutely dominated um, and bombarded by the big film industry and all the studios turning out these um, uh, movies, one after the other, all with different themes, but they all sold, whether it be a musical or a love drama, something like that. Still, even that story itself left us with the image of little Norma Jean as a cast-off, uh, a ward, uh, an orphan of the L.A. County. So um, either way, uh, I think Norma Jean really did suffer with that stigma, but it, it, there was not that much that she could do about it. I, it was the truth. And so there were other stories that circulated, such as one where um, Norma Jean recalled a grandmother trying to smother her when she was barely a year old um, and um, being forced into child labor, being forced to wash dishes 
in the orphanage. Well, that's not so bad. Um, uh, she included memories of being abused by the father of one of her adoptive or foster families and um, of being um, molested, things like that. I, I am not sure. I believe that probably much of it was true. I'm not sure about the grandmother part. Um, but this is uh, all, all probably things that maybe her agent might have suggested um, to draw more sympathy. I don't know. So, um, so whether it was her idea or whether it was the studios or her agents, um, the uh, theme of going from rags to riches was a very appealing Hollywood theme, and it made her on-screen characters all the more alluring and lovable. Um, that kind of uh, life story drew so much inspiration and gave so much inspiration to other Americans, uh, especially females, and um, it, it drew so much sympathy for her as well. And so one thing that we have to uh, recognize is that L.A. County, as it exists in a very large, sprawling, and somewhat chaotic confusion sometimes, um, I'm going by somebody else's description, but real urban L.A. life, it was not when she was a child what it is today. So there's that issue to comprehend as well. And so um, shortly after um, Gladys Baker was hospitalized, the first foster parents, Ida and Wayne Bolander, did offer little Norma Jean lots of love and comfort. And she made um, children's clothes. Ida made children's clothes, and um, I, there was one where uh, Norma Jean, I'm going to try to include it because I know it's online. Um, I, I, had, I had something with the same pattern imprint on it when I was a baby, and so um, it, it looks like little cherries, and she had a matching dress and bonnet. And so um, that was when Norma Jean was just... <laughs> a tiny girl, and um, so she made that for Norma Jean. Ida did love her, and so uh, we, don't, we, we don't know what else uh, Norma Jean would have had to endure after that, but that family was okay. And so I'm not sure that this biographer is going to go into any other details other than that, so we'll have to see. And so in the 1920s, L.A. was absolutely dominated um, and bombarded by the big film industry and all the studios turning out these um, uh, movies, one after the other, all with different themes, but they all sold, whether it be a musical or a love drama, something like that. And so what I'm trying to say is that nowadays, L.A. County is much more violent and um, permeated with a lot more poverty than it was back then. Still, um, the stars of Hollywood, of vintage Hollywood, would be able to um, show off their prestige and their fame like... Jean Harlow and Paul Byrne did with spectacular homes and lots of uh, glamorous items. And so um, there is a big, vast world of difference between the Hollywood of now and the Hollywood of then. The Hollywood of the 40s and 50s, um, all that, it doesn't exist anymore unfortunately. And so um, that's sad, isn't it? 
And so um, it was it was also uh, a place where many immigrants came to um, hold on. I thought I had to move. I don't have to move. Um, many immigrants, especially from Mexico and um, other parts of the East Coast, were were coming to settle. They were they were still not settled yet, and so there was that kind of activity, um, which was very. Um, it could have had an unsettling effect for some people. I'm not sure. Um, so um, the 1920s had been a liberating time because women began to assert their independence and um, for the first time. And men began to take leave. So um, they would disappear and move around with no commitment. It, there was a new class of family that was being developed or or being born in in America, and so women's liberation did that, and um, divorce began to be very com common, and single women earning a living and looking after their own kids was was um, very common, but. Um, Harleen's mom, even though her mom and dad did divorce, they were still very much in, uh, active in Harleen's life. They, they weren't, there was none of that in Harleen's life, but there was that in Norma Jean's life. And so um, Norma Jean's mom, Gladys Baker, was a single working mother. Common, not as common as today, mind you, there was a stigma attached to it, but common. It was becoming more and more common. And so um, uh, actually Gladys Baker was born in Mexico in 1900. So she was Mexican guys. And um, it's hard for me to imagine that Norma Jean her roots were Mexican, but it's true. They were Mexican, and it's beautiful. Um, but however, um, Norma Jean um, did take up with a man uh, in Mexico, and um, his name was Baker. And so um, his name was Jack Baker. And so I, I believe that Jack Baker was probably American. So, do you understand the stigma that I'm talking about now? Um, if you're thinking racism and discrimination, yes, the thought is crossing my mind. But I don't know what exactly the story or the facts were. So, I can't really comment that much. Anyway, it could not have been fun for Gladys Baker. Um... So uh, she did marry Jack Baker when uh, Gladys did marry Jack when she was still a teenager, just like Harleen married Chuck. And so um, she did produce two children, uh, Hermit and Bernice. So, um, uh, guys, what I think is that maybe uh, Norma Jean was from a different father. Um, Bernice was Norma Jean's half-sister. And so um, by the time uh, Gladys was 26 and Norma Jean was born, um, Jack and the two children disappeared from her life. Tough, huh? And so um, she, ha she did marry again. And so... This, this guy, his name was Edward Mortensen. So Norma Jean Baker Mortensen. That was actually her name. Uh, she had so many last names there, right? And so um, 
Gladys had a good job and she began to work as a film cutter after she met Edward Mortensen. And so um, she actually worked with consolidated film industries in Hollywood, right in Hollywood. And so despite her marriage with uh, Edward, uh, Gladys commonly called herself Baker. She still went by the name Baker. I don't know why. Maybe because of her children. I don't know why. Um, so um, she was in her mid-20s and very bright, competent, and certainly um, she had everything going for her. And so, um, uh, you know, she, she is said to have um, looked like Hollywood's um, Gloria Swanson, another blonde bombshell, and Norma Talmadge. And it is clear from photographs that young Gladys did have a lot of attract, attractive looks and a, a, a beautiful sense of style. And so I am sure that Norma Jean took after her mother. And so I'm going to try to include as many photos as I can of Gladys and so um, at this time, I, I'm very sure um, because of the circumstances of her employment and her marriage, she was in charge. She was very independent as well. And so, but I don't think that she fared well on her own. You know, um, maybe it was a time of independence for women, but that doesn't mean that she was an independent female. It means that she was probably thrust into that role without being prepared or wanting it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and uh, she did have an affair with a man with whom she was working, and that's unfortunate. Um, his name was Stanley Gifford. And so, guys, is, is Norma Jean a Gifford? Is she a Baker? Is she a Mortensen? She's probably a Mortensen. Um, it, it will probably never be known exactly why, um, you know, which, which man was actually Norma Jean's daddy. Uh, some sources do have uh, Mortensen as taking off long before the child could have even been conceived. So we don't know, guys. Where are the records? Um, I don't know what her birth certificate says. If I find it, I, I will let you know. I think I came across it once in a book or an article. I'm not sure, but um, and it, it seems that Gifford was the man, and that would be why Mortensen took off. Not a nice drama, right? Um, why, why Gladys would do that, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe Edward couldn't have children. I don't know. Um, I, beats me. And so um, there was a story also circulating, and it's probably true, that when um, Gladys's friends, um, before Norma Jean was born, Gladys's friends took up um, a mission to collect donations, money, for, um, for her before the baby was born. And it has been rumored that Gifford absolutely and adamantly refused. So maybe he was not the father. And that is why her, her parentage, Norma Jean's parentage is so um, sketchy. We don't know. We, we don't know. I don't think she knew either. Um, and at that, I don't even know if Gladys knew. Um, she, if she didn't know and was confused by which guy could be which, she must have been very busy indeed. But those things happened in those days. And so 
um, even though LA is a very different place right now, um, people didn't change, right? So anyway, um, you know, she had she had a beautiful baby girl, and um, she was working at the same time, and so um, she she did, however, end up having to at last find a foster home for Norma Jean, and actually. You know, this is so sad. She paid them to take care of Norma Jean, even though Norma Jean was a foster child. So even after giving up Norma Jean, she was still, well, she didn't entirely give her up at that point. She was still working for her daughter. She must have loved Norma Jean an enormous amount. And so um, anyway, that, that, that is incredible. Um, so, uh, Norma Jean never really knew who her real father was. That's, that's a fact. Um, we don't know if Gladys ever knew. And so, um, but the story that her mother was an invalid, too ill to look after her, and therefore abandon her, is not really the truth. And I know that is what many, um articles and fan magazines at the time and even now um, were, were claiming that she just was too ill. At one point she did become very ill but when she was young and after Norma Jean was born she was still very active and working in the movie industry to support her daughter. So that is a fact. And so um, uh, she did visit Norma Jean at the foster home very regularly. And when Norma Jean was ill, she took three weeks off work a month to look after her personally. <sighs> Guys, she loved that baby. She loved that baby. And so um, Gladys then... Um, latched on to another project that she was working on. And so that would be um, to um, provide herself with a husband and a home and a father for her child. So this should not have been too difficult because um, she was very attractive and she had very, um, she was independent and earning a, a living. But um, still she had a baby. And so that couldn't have made things all the more easier for her to find a husband. And so although she had male friends over the next few years, she never did remarry, actually. And so, but her aim to live in her own house with her daughter was eventually realized. And um, after eight years, Gladys saved enough money, eight years, guys, of being without your child every day on a daily basis. Um, she put a down payment on a bungalow in Hollywood, must have been expensive, and rented out the house, but um, she rented out the house, but rented back a couple of rooms for her and Norma Jean. So um, she bought the house and then rented it out all but two rooms. Wow, what a woman. And so um, I, I sense a personality coming out here. Um, it's, it's making me cry. And so um, she really, really longed for a family life. And I'm sure that her departed um, children with um, Baker were a source of grief for her because she couldn't see them. And then in those days, that, that was still illegal, but he got away with it. And so that is so sad. Um, anyway, um, in, in 1935, this, this good state of affairs, when, when Norma Jean must have been about eight, nine, um, it, it came to a halt, right? Um, because Gladys had a breakdown. And I don't know what it was that triggered it. And she was taken to LA General Hospital. 
a nun placed in Norwalk State Asylum where she was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. Now, guys, um, I'm not going to comment because we don't have the medical records, but uh, I, I believe that she was probably in somewhat good hands. We don't know if she was abused there. We, we don't know anything more about it, right? So from then on, Norma Jean became an orphan again. And um, this time she was not in, okay, she went to more foster homes, but um, she was no longer a ward of her mother. She was no longer under her mother's, you know, she, she was not a foster child just because her mother was out working. Um, things were very different. And so um, the um, family to whom, um, hold on. Okay, my notes end right there. <laughs> so um, that will be it for today. I'm sorry that I, I left off right there. Um, we have to speak more about the family whom she rented out to and, and see to what extent that they were able to assist in this uh, situation. And so guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this discussion on little Norma Jean Baker, and we still have to deal with her childhood and her teen life. So um, stay tuned for the next part, which is coming up soon. And um, I I don't know what I'm doing later. I, I don't know if this is the end of the vlog. Oh, I'll have to see. But um, in, in case it is not, um, I, I will be touching base with you back at home and uh, showing you how I make my tomato sauce and possibly the pasta as well. I'm not sure. So um, I think that the video has been long enough and uh, I'll probably just end it here. So, um, gee, I have to decide. And so, guys, um, I am going to close it off here and i i hope that you have enjoyed this content thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to like and subscribe bye for now